Okay, so the purpose of the 2014 green chicken exam was to see how many times could I use 2014 where it actually mattered. And if so, how did it matter? So the first one, this is all 2014 green chicken. Um, right, the swivel's not working, all right. So number one, we have B and 2014 are relatively prime, show there exist infinitely many composites and congruent to B mod 2014. So there's lots of ways to do this. If B is not 1, it's very easy. If B is greater than 1, look at 2014 AB plus B. If B equals 1, you have to be a little more careful. In the solution key I gave out, there are ways of attacking this. One possibility is to look at 2014 N plus 1 plus 1. And now all numbers of this form will be the form 2014 N plus 2015. And so now we've just replaced the number B with the number 2015 and we can use the argument from before. So that was a nice way around it. Another way which a lot of people uh, approach it is they look at B congruent to 0 mod 3, B <coughs> congruent to 1 mod 3, and B congruent to 2 mod 3. This means when you divide B by 3, you get a remainder of 0, 1, or 2. Uh, what is the number 2014 when you divide by 3? Somebody knows 2013 is a multiple of 3. 2014 is congruent to 1 mod 3, therefore 2014n is congruent to n mod 3. So if you want to get infinitely many multiples of 3, all you do is you make sure n is in the same congruence class if b is 0 mod 3, if b is 1 mod 3, you take n to be 2 mod 3, and vice versa. And you'll get at least one third of all the numbers in the sequence. What I like about this is I actually prefer this to my proof it cuts down a little bit on the algebra, and it uses some property of 2014. The fact that 2014 is 1 mod 3. I wish I had been clever enough to have thought of that. I sadly was not. Any other thoughts or comments people want to make on ways to look at problem number 1? Doesn't that, um, doesn't that grow too quickly? Which? To contain um, the sequence 2014 plus bn. Can we make an asymptotic argument? Oh, if you, if you know that, there are, that the number of primes is x over log x, yeah. if this contained um, only finally many composites, then there would be, and you, could, and you could do elephant gun approach, absolutely. That would absolutely be fine to say, we know the number of primes up to x is at most 2x over log x when x is large. The number of numbers here is x over 2014 plus or minus 1. That's too large if they were all prime. It violates the prime number theorem, therefore there must be infinitely many composites. Absolutely, any of those arguments would be fine. Any other questions or comments about number one? Okay, was number two the horses going around in circles? Okay, so for this one, you know, again, uh, this is a very standard problem. What I like about it is the year actually works out very nicely for this. So the forces are named 1, 2, but the 10 name equals time to run a circle. And in part A we ask, will all the horses return to the start at the end of, you know, before we get to the 2014th minute? And so for A, we notice that 1 is always going to be there, 2, we need it to be an even number, 3, multiple of 3, 4, multiple of 4, da, 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 da. So when we start looking at this, we see certain horses subsume other horses. Which are the only horses that really matter? If we want everyone to be back at the origin. Five. Five matters? Seven. Seven. Two. Well, two and three. Two and three don't matter. Nine. Eight. Nine matters. Who else matters? Eight. eight. Because if 8 is there, 4 has to be there. 4 has gone around twice as much. And 2 has got to be there as well. If 9 is there, 3 has to be there. 3 has been there 3 times as much. So the only chance we have, and of course, uh, 10 is going to be there because 5 and 8 are there. So 10 will be there as well. 
So all we have to do is make sure that these four forces are there together. <coughs> and so it's going to become, you know, the, you know, what's nice is these numbers are relatively prime. We look at the least common multiple. So least common multiple. <coughs> you know what this number is? 2,500. 20. 20. 20. And so it just barely misses for 2014. Tragic. Five hundred minutes is like a lot of minutes. I'm sorry? So 500 minutes, I would consider a lot of minutes. Depends on the situation. <coughs> when my mother-in-law, who grew up overlooking Yankee Stadium, visited us right after the Red Sox won the 2004 World Series, she was going, can't there be something else on TV after you know, two or three days? <laughs> and so for her, that was clearly too many minutes of you know, Red Sox celebrity. <laughs> but 500 minutes relative to 2,000, we're off by 25%. Or 20% if you want to play it like this going down. Ballpark order of magnitude, it's not hollow. It's off, but it's not off by an incredibly large amount. I part B was how far do we have to go before 50% arrive or more, you know, all at the same time. There's lots of ways to go about this. One way, and the way I was doing it was kind of just going on a direct path. From first principles, try to think, when can I have five, when can I have six, when can I have seven people going like that? A better way, which a lot of people did, is say, screw that, let's just start listing you know, who is around at each minute and hope that we get there pretty quickly. And since we're going to have at least five by the 12th minute, this is going to work really well. So for part B, minute one, minute two, minute three, minute four, minute five, minute six, Kim and Kayla liked this approach. At minute one, there's just horse one. In fact, well, we always know one is there, one's boring. Two is there every other one. Three is here. And here, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And I think just writing the numbers like this is the easiest way to do it. And then we'll get 3, we'll come in here and here. Uh, we need 4, 4 comes in there, 4 comes in here, 4 comes in here, 5 comes in here, 5 comes in here, 6 comes in here. And six comes in here, and we're already done. And now we can think, of course, we, we still have to look and see who could be at seven. Well, we could still get seven. Who could be at eight? We can get eight here. We can also get nine here. Uh, we can get ten here. And so we see that the first time in which we get at least half of the horses is twelve. And so the brute force here isn't too bad, too. Any other questions or ways of looking at this problem? Okay, I'm blanking now. Which one was three? The oh, the Connerys was the C and C. So, there's a lot of wonderful things about the C and C sequence. It turns out you can associate a periodic table to the numbers in the C and C sequence, and the cosmological theorem is that from some point onward, at every line, you will have every atom. The original proof of this was lost in Professor Conway's office at Princeton. And as somebody who was once hired to clean his office, well, I can't see the name. So it starts off 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1. You say each number aloud. So here I would have 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1s. Then I would have 3, 1s, 2, 2s, and then 1, 1. 1, 3, 1, 1, 2, 2s, 2, 1s. I'll do one more line. One, 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 three, two ones, three twos, one, one. There's a lot of wonderful stuff here. I will you know, post some links to the CNC sequence. This is John Conway at his best in terms of taking something that seems ridiculous and having really good mathematics come from this. How many of you at least vaguely remember hearing about eigenvalues and spectral theorems? writing a matrix as a diagonal matrix with orthogonals if it's real symmetric. Not all matrices are diagonalizable. <coughs> Some matrices are Jordanizable. It turns out you can associate a matrix to this problem. The matrix cannot be diagonalized. The rate of growth of this as to how long it goes from one line to the next is actually governed by the largest eigenvalue of the largest Jordan block. It is a strange, strange sequence. Okay, So green chicken is not even remotely right on this one. 
Uh, the largest number I think that occurs is four, or maybe even four doesn't occur. I can't remember. Four doesn't, four doesn't even occur. Okay, and the way you start going about this is you start analyzing what would you have to have to say something. So at this point, you know, the largest number we have is a three. We're having this from three ones. What would it mean to have a four occur at some point, or a five or a six? And so if I want to do this, I would have to have one, two, three, I would say have to have four ones, you know, in the previous line, and then I would have to speak. Or if I want to have a five, I'd have to have five ones, a six, I'd have to have six ones. Let's look at the case of, let's assume we had four ones at some point. Is there a reason why you can discard the four two and four three case? What do you mean by four two? Like, say you have four twos in a row, and then also three a four, or is that, can you just say that that's not a valid configuration? I mean, if any one is just chosen without Yeah, loss I mean, it's chosen here. without loss of general. Okay. Is, let's say we have, you know, something like this. Gotcha. What would it mean? On, yes. You would have to have like one one, one one. Right. But then you would just have two ones. Then you would just have two ones. And so, you know, if you had something like this, what does it look like on the previous line? Yeah. And then you also have to play a little bit of games of maybe putting stuff before and after. You know, what if this has ones in it as <coughs> well? You know, we have you know five minutes. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. Yes. You don't actually have to think about what x and y are. Okay. Because you just have to think about how you partition the one, 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 one. Right, I was just wondering if, if some of this one came from the x. Well, because if you have to up through this line, then you still have at least one. You would still have, exactly. Like, I don't think you need the x and the y. I was just trying to be overly cautious. And then just say, if I had four ones here, what would I have had to have on the previous line? Could I have said this? Right, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on this one. Yeah. I'll leave it there. Number four. I'm going to skip for, for now because you know, the lot of whole numbers takes a little bit of time. All right, number five was consider all set of 2014 distinct positive integers where each integer is at least 36. Why do you think I chose 36? 36 is green chicken. 36 green chicken. So this is number five. Um, so S has 2014 distinct integers. Each is at least 36. Do you think 36 matters? And if so, in what way? Square. So in positive. it's positive. It's greater than 1. The whole point of the 36 is I want to exclude the number 1 from being my set. Because if I'm forming products. Why would you use 36 twice in the test? It's a 36 green chicken. Oh. Uh. Right. And then, uh, yeah, so the very first line, it's 36 <coughs> competition. So 36 was a nice square. I could have tried to you know, incorporate somehow the fact that we're dealing with a square. All that really matters for this is that 36 is greater than 1. Is we're looking at products of integers, and we want to have distinct products. Well, if one of my numbers was allowed to be 1, then I could either include it or not include it, and it's not going to affect me. Well, clearly, if I'm trying to maximize the number of distinct products, I wouldn't want to include one. If I was trying to minimize distinct products, I would include one. So I'm just forcing things to be at least 36 so that nothing is one. So we want to maximize number of products. Maximize number of products. Take S to be 2014 distinct primes. So if I take my set to be 2014 distinct primes, no product will ever be the same. This is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. You know, I can't write the number 6 two different ways, as you know, 2 times 3 and you know, 5 times 7. You can't write an integer as a product of prime powers in two different ways. This fails violently if I'm like myself, you take classes like abstract algebra. What's the most famous example in abstract algebra where unique factorization fails? Z adjoined root 5 or something like that. So it's something like Z adjoined screwed of negative 5? Or is it 5? I think, yeah, I think it's 5i. I think it's negative 5. And so if you look at 1 plus the screw of negative 5 and 1 minus the screw of negative 5, this becomes 1 minus negative 5 squared, which is also known as 6, which is 2 times 3. So here's an example where unique factorization fails. 
If you take abstract algebra, you start talking about what does it mean for number to be prime versus irreducible. You get to spend lots of stuff like that, so I've been told. Okay, I've never actually taken the course. If you don't like this, here's another example which I find amusing. What's sine of x times sine of x? No, or oh, yes. Yeah. 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x. When you multiply that out, you get 1 minus cosine squared x. And so here is another way of decomposing something two different ways. And as an analyst, I greatly prefer this example to, damn it, is it with the minus 5 or the minus 5? Which way do I do it? Right, so part B for this problem was then to figure out what is the fewest number of products we can have. And so for the fewest, we want to have as many overlaps as possible. So it's 11.50 right now, so we're going to have to stop. So P, P squared, P cubed, da da da, P to the 2014. And then basically what we'll get is, for the first one, for the maximum number of products, it's going to be 2014 choose 4. If I choose any four numbers, that's going to give me a unique product. Over here, I'm going to get everything from the smallest number, which is going to be P to the 10th, I think, all the way up to P to the 2014, plus 13, plus 12, plus 11. All right, so we will do the last two problems on Wednesday. Wednesday. I will send an email if I can. My kids' school has been canceled for this afternoon, so I'm going to have to be 